Guys, time is the only resource that we can't get more of, and I want to commit as much time as possible to putting out content that helps more people just like you. The only way that I can do that is if you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Please give me feedback and help me help you. Zach is going to play the part of Zach, and he's going to he's going to educate her. Now. Let's go. Meryl Dean is calling in. Ring, ring, ring. This is Zach with Medicare Grooves. How can I help you? Hey, Zach. This is Meryl Dean and Marietta. Um, I'm looking to, to get this Medicare stuff handled as soon as I possibly can. I turned 65 in May. In May. Okay. Have you already talked to Social Security and set all that up? Got Part A and B activated? Yes, sir. I get my I got my A and B card last month. Okay. Good deal. Well, how much do you know of Medicare right now? I don't know nothing, and y'all are the gurus, so y'all can just uh, help guide me and help educate me on this situation here. Okay. Um, so I'll give you kind of like a thirty thousand foot view, and then we can kind of dive in here in just a second. How so many feet? Thirty thousand. Okay. So, you said you have your Medicare card, the A and B, and basically what that does is part A, we call it inpatient, and then part B would be your outpatient or medical, and those two will pay 80% of your medical bills, okay? Okay. And then there's left of that 20% that right. will... It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Does part A pay 80%? Part B no. pays 80%. Part B pays okay. 80%. Let's just make sure we explain it correctly because since we're going live and putting it on the internet, there's a whole bunch of people that will definitely want you to say things correctly or they'll, you know, like call up uh, Seema Verma and tell, her, tell on you. So okay. let's, try to, let's, try, let's try to back it up to part A and B are inpatient and outpatient. And part B is going to cover 80% of your medical. So the way, way I'd separate it, just going to bring it back to part A and B are inpatient or hospital. Part B is medical or outpatient. Um, but part B encompasses a lot of additional things that a lot of people don't think of. Part A being inpatient, you're going to have a part A hospital admission deductible. And after an extended stay, you'd have these daily co-pays that can get pretty high in the hospital. But on part B, it's 80-20, but the 20% has no limit. And that, that's, you know, honestly, um, at, at that point in the conversation, it's so simple for a lot of people that some people try to get into this massively long, this is what we are talking about yesterday, this massively long educational pitch. And some customers don't want that. You can say 80% and then to 20% has no limit, and that's on services like chemotherapy, radiation, doctor's visits, specialist visits, um, CT scans, all of these different things, and there's no limit on that 20%, but the good news is there are standardized plans that we can pair with that that make it where you don't have to pay all that 20% hospital deductibles, co-pays. So try to, try to reiterate what I just said there. Okay. So Meryl Dean says um, she's got her, her card and it's got an A and a B on it and they start June 1st, so just tee it back up. So you said your Part A and B effective date's June 1st, correct? Yes, it's going to be June 1st. Okay. So your Part A is hospital admission or inpatient, we like to call it. Um, and that has a, a $1,400 deductible. And then after so many days, you could have that deductible again. And then Part B is your outpatient medical, is what we call it. And then that will pay 80% of your outpatient bills. And then you're left with that 20% that's uncapped meaning okay. that there's no limit to it, okay? okay? However, we can fill that here in just a second with a supplement that I'll talk about. And then there's Part D of Medicare, which is your prescription coverage. Okay. okay. Now, what's this Plan G everybody keeps talking about? It's a good question. Plan Medigap Plan or Medicare Supplement Plan G is uh, what we call the Cadillac Plan now. Um, it's probably the best plan out there. It, only out of pocket that you would have would be a $203 deductible. Then after you meet that, everything is covered the rest of the year. It pays that additional 20% that Medicare Part B does not cover. Just to address it, be careful not to say best plan because it's a subjective concept. It depends on the person what's best. 
So let's say, uh, you know, Plan G is one of the standardized Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans. It is the one that covers the most for anybody aging into Medicare now. If you slow that down and sound very matter of fact and educated on it, you don't have to say it's the best. You can just say it's, it is the one that covers the most um, on the supplement plan chassis or whatever. Okay. So try that. Okay. Yeah, so Plan G is, uh, we call it the Cadillac plan because it's probably the most um, the comprehensive coverage. The only out-of-pocket cost that you would have is a $203 deductible. After you met that deductible, it would pay that 20% that Medicare B does not cover. Okay. All right, so what we need to do to get started there, Zachary? So we can actually do this um, all over the phone. Uh, so uh, we just need to get a little bit of information from you. And then we can uh, go forward. What is your Medicare number? 6G83YG7. Let's give a, like a little bit of, of a rebuttal here. Let's say, um, well, my, you know, first of all, we didn't even talk about price on it. So let's say, let's talk, let's say <laughs> you're just like, I don't care what it costs, <laughs> that's what I want. Um, so let's say Meraldine says, well, you know, um, how much is all this going to cost me? So you're going to need to explain what Part B costs, as well as the Plan G, and then uh, and then you know you're going to have to say and that covers drugs too and things like that. So, so Zach, I've heard that I've got a, a, a like a 140 something dollar premium for Part B is what they're telling me. Now, yeah. what else is going to occur in this Medicare world for me? Right, yeah, okay, so that is correct. You do have a, it's $148.50 uh, premium for Part B. And then if you, like the Plan G we were talking about, it is going to run you around $90. You know, uh, you're 65 and you're a female, so yeah, it's going to be around $90 a month. Okay. What's the exact price, Zach? I want to go ahead and buy this now. I want to go ahead and get this done. 96.83. 96.83. That's a good price, Zach. Lock that rate in for me. <laughs> All right, you're a really easy sale. Let me let me try. Okay. <laughs> All right, Zach. I'm just confused because I have some friends that have told me that they've gotten all of this stuff for free. Okay. So what they're more than likely talking about is a Medicare Advantage plan. Have you seen the uh, Joe Namath commercials on TV? Yeah, I see him all the time. He he wants to pick me up in a limo and take me to the doctor for free. Right. I, yeah, I'm not he, buying all that. <laughs> yeah, and he wants to give you all these extra benefits like dental vision and hearing and stuff. Right, right. Right, yeah. So that's the plan that all these people are talking about when they say the free plan. Um, some are zero premium. Some do have a, a small premium on them. Um, they're really good plans for some people. Like we like to say, Medicare is not a one-size-fits-all, so it kind of depends on the situation and the person. So, so why, why would uh, why would some of my friends have chosen those plans? Is there a good reason, or should I be looking at those? Should I call? I think one of them used uh, United Healthcare. Should I call United Healthcare and try to get that plan from them? Well, we offer those plans as well. You don't have to call the United Healthcare. Um, it it just kind of depends, like I said, on the situation. So the low premiums could be a good factor. The additional benefits, like dental, vision, and hearing, over-the-counter benefits, all that is kind of factors in. Now, there is a, a network that comes with Medicare Advantage plans, meaning you have to go to a set of doctors with a original Medicare and a supplement. You can go to any doctor in the nation as long as they accept Medicare. All right. Well, I'm living on a, you know, a little bit of a limited income, so that, you know, it does appeal to me pretty well. Like, you, how, it's just all very confusing. I don't really understand how they, one of them is going to offer me coverage for free and include extra benefits, and then another one is going to charge me a premium. And I guess that uh, the Plan G you're talking about, does it have dental and vision? It actually doesn't have dental and vision. It will cover like, you know, cataract surgeries, but it won't cover like basic dental or vision services. Um, and it doesn't have prescription coverage in it as well. So they're uh, kind of way against each other. You do have a premium for the Plan G and some of the Advantage plans are no premium or very low premium. However, when you go to the doctor, you have co-pays on these Medicare Advantage plans. 
Right. Um, and there's co-pays for, you know, individual services that the doctors do. So even though it may be zero premium, if you're going to the doctor a lot, it could cost you a lot more money out of pocket. Um, with the Medicare Plan G, your only out of pocket expense is the $203 deductible. And then you can go to the doctor as many times as you want to after that and it's covered. Okay, all right, so if I go Medicare in a supplement and I wanted to add dental, vision, and hearing and prescription, how much is all that gonna cost me? So the dental is only gonna cost you about, uh, the dental and the supplement together is gonna probably be around 140-ish. Um, the prescription plan kind of depends on the prescriptions you take um, and what pharmacy you go to. So what all prescriptions do you take? I don't take any right you now. You don't take any, okay. So we do have a lot of clients that are in your same situation. They take one or two or no prescriptions and they say, you know, why do we even need a prescription plan? And, and you would think that you wouldn't. However, Medicare does penalize you every month you go without having a prescription plan. So even though you're not taking anything, I would recommend that we put you on the lowest premium plan, $7.30. That way you're not getting that penalty. And then if you ever do get prescribed something, you have some coverage there. Because if you don't get it right now and then you get prescribed something in um, November or December, you're having to pay that full cost of that prescription. This way you're at least covered. Okay. Well, right now I'm just shopping around, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and try to call some uh, other companies that had sent me some things in the mail and, and that I saw on TV. So I appreciate you helping me. You've been, you've been informative, and uh, I've taken some notes, and, and uh, if, if I don't like anything else I hear, I'll give you a call back. I understand that. You want to shop around and stuff. Um, we do represent 70 different companies in the Medicare industry, so we represent most if not all of the companies that are in here so I can any company that's out there I can write you with uh, if that's what you want to look at um, also I would like to tell you that we could go ahead and lock this in today that way the rates don't change on you because they do have a tendency to go up from time to time and so that way you're getting this rate locked in today and you won't even have to worry about it anymore so do you would you have to mail me something Actually, I would not. We could actually do it all over the phone, or you could come into the and do an in-office appointment. It's kind of up to you, but because of, you know, COVID and all of that, they made us where we can do it all over the phone. Okay. Well, um, I I was thinking about you know, so here's here's something I would say. If somebody, this is just something that you guys could use if you want. Um, if somebody says I want to, I'm I'm shopping around. Um, I would say. That, that's, that, I love shopping around. That's what we're doing right now. We're shopping around for you. And then it just kind of is a clever way to tell them, like, we are shopping around. Like, you can go call Humana, you can call Aetna, you can call Cigna, or I can look in my computer program here that's going to tell me what all of those plans look like. Um, uh, you know, I think in that turn 65 scenario, like, she's got a lot of friends that are paying zero premiums and things, too. You might want to entertain looking up the Medicare Advantage plan and going and, and looking at both routes for them mm -hmm. um, and really teeing up both and letting them choose. Um, you know, I think you have to, we've, we've done so many med subs for a long time that now that Medicare Advantage is getting more and more um, competitive in the, the turning 65 arena, we probably need to present both or you're going to yeah. end up starting to lose a few to people that say, well, I noticed didn't offer that it, me it that sounded like premium. I was kind of leaning towards one. I didn't and that's what we've to, done so. for a long time because, you know, when it, when we had a, you know, for those of you that don't know the up until about two years ago, really nowhere around here, there was a Medicare Advantage plan other than a $110 plan through one carrier that had a $6,700 maximum out of pocket, and no real additional benefits. When you compare that to a plan G or a plan N, it was a no brainer to not go the Medicare Advantage route. Um, but now that it's more competitive, mm -hmm. um, I think in these turning 65 appointments, uh, if you, you, I don't want to lean either way. I just want to present both um, and make sure that, you know, I mean, you can mm -hmm. lean as far as you, I can say, well, listen, one of these is going to be much less expensive. And if you remain really, really healthy, um, for a while, you're going to have a whole lot less out of pocket with it. If you're okay with navigating a network and the idea that that network can change over time, um, that's and you know that's certainly an option for you. It does come with some additional benefits, 
um, that can be advantageous. Um, and then the other side, you know, the, the pros there is it's more expensive and it can go up over time. It, it probably will go up over time. However, you have complete flexibility in your network. You can go to pretty much any doctor or hospital you want to, which is super convenient, but it all comes down to cost versus reward. So um, I always want to ask my customers if, are they someone that wants to pay, you know, a little more up front and not have to worry about it? Or are they somebody that um, wants to pay a little bit less uh, on the, the front end and hope for the best and then still be protected from cat catastrophe but may have to navigate a network on the back end? Which one of those is, is more you? And, and so a lot of times they'll pick a route and you can just dive into that route. But, uh, you know, what they really need to know is what is the price disparity? Because if it's 10 bucks for, you know, complete freedom and not having to worry about it versus zero, obviously they'll pay the $10. But if you say it's 160 versus zero or mm -hmm. 160 versus 60 with price premium increases uh, over time, you might start to see people's mind fluctuate. But you, we do want to be completely unbiased and tell them that we offer both. You know, we see people that when they're really, really sick, they're happier with a, a supplement and not having to worry about it. But to be fair, they might have paid in a lot more in premium over the years. Uh, and the people on the Advantage plan save so much that by the time they do pay a significant amount out of pocket one year, you know, they might not even have caught up with what that other person paid on premium. I mean, there's a lot to think about there. Probably the biggest difference is the network freedom. Um, now, and the funny thing is, like, really to get into that, you seem like you just confuse the hell out of a senior. Um, but that may not even be a bad thing. Like, if you really, really get into it and say it that way, and they're like, man, I don't know what to do. And they're like, listen, you know, do you want me to just tell you what I would do for my mother? And then a lot of times they'll just let you, you know, you know, steer them into that. And you can tell them why. Look, it's sometimes it's, I can say, here's what I like to say, too, when they're really confused as to which route to go. I would say... Well, you know, if you were my mom, what I would tell you is you're turning 65 right now. You, you have a golden ticket to get this Medicare supplement. And if that price goes up over time and gets unaffordable and we can't rewrite you and get the price down, then you can always go back to a Medicare Advantage plan that's available. You can't always go back to a Medicare supplement. And then, you know, that might be my lead into where I'm leaning Medicare supplement for those people. I just want to give the option because if you're out there selling four apps and it's like 200 bucks a month because they got cancer and dental and a med sup and a drug plan. It's not that that's not the absolute best thing out there, but they might not understand that it's the best thing. And then when somebody says, well, I can give you all that for, for zero premium, then they don't understand the difference and they might change. And then they might come back to you later on, but it might be too late to fix them. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to like tee those educational ones up. Now sometimes around here you get them come in and they're already saying, you know, I just want that supplement where I can go to any doctor I want to because somebody's already told them that. Mm -hmm. But then you get other ones like the AEP that are coming in saying, I want that one that has the dental and vision and the rides to the doctors for no money. Right. So, you, you know, some of those you just lead straight into what they want, sell them what they want and then sell them what they need. Uh, but but that's, that's where that conversation, you know, should look like, I think, is at least if they're inquisitive about the concepts and aren't already kind of diving in and telling you what they want, what they want you should be able to educate them on both to some degree. Slow it down, um, but, but say enough to where they know you know what you're talking about. If somebody asks, tells you they're, that they're going to shop around, there's two thought processes. One, they don't even know that you're shopping around and you can do it right then. They don't know what to say. So a lot of times the objection I'm going to shop around is like, like you haven't told them to, to take the application out yet. You haven't closed, the, you haven't said, well, we can do it right now. And so they're just confused as to what the process is, so they keep shopping because that's what they, they're in shopping mode. You have to end shopping mode and close the deal. The other reason they might be shopping around is because you haven't convinced them of your authority and, and how well versed you are on the topic. So if you, you know, communicate, like, and so sometimes we want to communicate at the level of somebody else, but let's say somebody is maybe not the brightest, you know, uh, the brightest crayon in the box, but they're still inquisitive. But you want to say enough to where they know that you don't want to sound pompous and like arrogant, like using tons and tons of big words, but you want to say enough that you do look educated on the topic. You don't want to just be like, well, because this is what some people do. You know, they want to go say, so, well, it's an umbrella and blah, blah, blah. And they just use these goofy like euphemisms. So somebody that's inquisitive 
and they haven't just completely bought into you and you you take that like lackadaisical approach to sales and you don't really sound educated on it, they're not going to be bought, they're not going to be sold on you. Um, you know, then there's the other ones that they don't care about all the details. So you have to learn how to read the person. So, you know, you could have somebody that's really smart and inquisitive. You can have somebody that's really smart and very trusting and just wants you to tell them what to do. You can have somebody that's really dumb and inquisitive. You can have somebody that's really dumb and, uh, and just wants you to tell them what to do. It's like four different people you know what I mean mm -hmm. and and the faster you can understand which one is which you can craft your pitch for that person um, I you know I'd love it if they were all um, intelligent people that just want me to tell them what to do <laughs> but they're not all that way sometimes people are inquisitive not because they're like you know brainiacs or anything but they're just worried about making the wrong decision so you have to show them that you're the authority and you have to you have to be able to exhibit a little bit of you know knowledge using some of those you know being well versed on it reading some books on medicare that throw those terms into the back of your head like medicare standardization act and um uh macra you know so you can explain like to, to just throw in something somebody's very inquisitive and you're telling them about supplements throw in something in there like well medicare Supplement Plan F or Medigap Plan F used to be the plan that covered all of the out-of-pocket with Parts A and B, but now that plan isn't available for anyone aging in to Medicare after January 1st of 2020 because there was a law signed called MACRA, and that law phased out the availability of plans that didn't have a Part B deductible. You say that in that way, people are going to view you as an authority figure. To us, that might all sound like, well, duh. But to them, that just sounds like, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. And most of the people they're calling on the phone are just like, yeah, what you can get is a plan G, and a plan G covers everything but this deductible. And they're just kind of, it's so like telesales, and they're, and they're having to train, there's mass training people, so they're not extremely educated on it. If you say something to sound educated and helpful and slowed down and not like you're racing to the finish line, they might actually pull you to the finish line because they're like, man, this is the first guy that actually sounds educated on the topic. I want him to be my broker. And then tell them things like, you know, um, the relationship that we have with our clients is we want to be their lifetime broker. We work for you so that over time we can help you make other decisions like maybe a supplement increases over time or your drug plan needs change and we can shop that for you. So you, you just... Adding in things like that, I think, separates you from the herd of people that just learn the basic information. Plan G or zero premium. Oh, this is the best zero premium. This is your doctors are in it, your drugs are taken, and it's got, you know, the most dental. Um, but it's not, that's not all there is. Like, you have to sound somewhat educated. And if you start talking about prior authorization or step therapy or any of these things like that, somebody that's inquisitive would, would be, you can win them over more. Now... Like, so Rob is somebody that has to learn those things because like we were talking about yesterday, his nature is to like, you know, is to, you know, to find the shortest path to the close. And the cool thing is there's a lot of people that will let you do that. But as we're role playing, I'm never going to, I don't want anybody to role play as the person just saying, all right, sell me that, you know, right. because it doesn't give you any, um, any, any, those people you're going to close. We're not training to close the people that can come in and say, I don't care what it costs, I want the plan G, sign me up now. Like, that's not a, like we don't need to role play that. If you can't do that, you need to get out of the business. Um, we need to role play the inquisitive person. And the inquisitive person, sometimes you have to learn more information so that you are the subject matter expert. And if you're trying to make a career out of it, you should stay up at night and read some articles about Medicare changes so that when you're talking to somebody, they're like, shit, this guy knows about Medicare, you know. This, he knows a lot about Medicare. If I go to a mechanic and they're like, yeah, the little squiggly thing in there is probably messed up, I'll pull it out and put, you know, I'll, fit, I'll get it fixed. <laughs> or, well, uh, sir, what's wrong with my heart? I've been, you know, I, I just really want to make sure, you know, I, I have kids and I want to make sure my heart continues to work forever. Well, you know, have y'all seen that commercial? Is that the difference in, uh, the difference in like pretty sure and certain? And then what's the other one with the surgeon? Where he says, uh, there's one of them where he says, uh, how many of these you done? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, or he says, pretty certain. I'm, I'm pretty certain we can fix your heart. Like, I'm pretty sure, you know. But like, 
You know, I want somebody that's confident in it and knows what they're talking about. Actually, if I'm going in a surgeon and he's talking with like all kinds of like shit that I don't understand about my heart, I'm like, good. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I want you to be light years smarter than me on this so you can fix it. But I still want to hear it. I don't want him to be like, well, basically, you got all these little, like, valves in there. Some of them's working good. Some of them ain't. We're going to go in there and we're going to clean them suckers out. Like, he might think that's great bedside manner, but for me as a person, I'm like, God, I don't know if I want this guy cutting my chest open. Can you tell me in big words that I don't understand how you're going to do this so I know you're smart? I mean, so that's... That's just a, a lesson, but it's always like knowing your audience. If somebody does come in and they're just like, my friend Martha sent me over here, I want exactly what you sold her. Okay. I'm not going to spend my time telling you how smart I am. <laughs> but if they come in and be like, I, have, I don't understand any of this stuff, and I just want to sit down with somebody, and, and, and if they get to that shop around phase, maybe they're not certain and you got to loop them back in, and that's when you can go in and start you know, throwing some flashier information at them. Would you do like uh, if you do some of these carriers? It's kind of sometimes it's hard to get in touch with them. With us, we're a broker and we're we can help you on a lot of the issues. Would you kind I'll, of go into that? I would make it you know part of it, but I also think that if they say we're going to shop around, they either don't know that they need to be closed at this point. They don't know what that next step is, or they haven't bought you yet. So I'd circle back and I would come back and start saying, you know. Well, one thing you need to know is we are brokers. We are shopping around. But number two, what other questions do you have that we can answer? And now we're starting to get people come in. So we're going to end it right now and help these guys out. Yeah. Come on. Come on.